Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. child. Hi, please read the following article. Can you find the noun clause in the last example? I'll give you 30 seconds to read it and identify it. You may begin. Did you find it? Let's do it together. There is only one bathroom. Noun clauses have to be. Remember? Did you find it? Hello, Mirna. How are you? Hello, teacher. Very well, thank you. And you? Very good, very good. We're going to do a little review in regards okay. to yesterday's class. So here I want you to notice that it says, the only bad thing about living in our house is there's only one bathroom. Do you see that? Here, yes. the big advantage 
of having her at home is that she can babysit more often. And here on the last one, where it says, the only trouble with being a two income family is we don't spend as much time together. So I want you to analyze these examples and we're going to review from yesterday's class. For example, if I say to you, uh, if I say the good thing about having your own transportation is, who can give me an example? The good thing about having your own transportation is lo bueno de tener tu propia transportación es, what is the good thing? Who can give travel me? more secure. Okay, very good. The good thing about having your own transportation is you are safer. Excellent. Now the opposite. The bad thing about having your own transportation is who can finish the sentence what is the bad thing uh, your car can be installed very good the bad thing about having your own transportation is your car can break down. Okay. Do you have any questions referring to these types of noun clauses? No. Oh, teacher is clean. Okay. Uh, let's see another example. Um, I can say for you. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's do it together. Oops. There is only one bathroom. Sorry. Now classes have to be. Okay. For example, if I say to you, um, the advantage of speaking English is what is the advantage of speaking English? Who can tell me what is the advantage of speaking English? Uh, teacher, you can get a better job. Excellent. Good job. Or... Yes. The advantage of speaking English is you can get a well-paid job. Un trabajo bien pagado. Okay, excellent, excellent. Now, a negative. The disadvantage of speaking English is what is a disadvantage?
Who can tell me a disadvantage of speaking English? Me neither. I have no disadvantages for speaking English. It's only advantages. More and more and more. Excellent. Do you have any questions referring to this topic? No, teacher. And now? Okay. I would like for us to, we're going to see if we can finish uh, this unit today. We still need to look at this section, this section, the video, this and this knowledge check. So we have a lot of work to do. So let's go ahead and get started uh, and look at the following one. The following one is a knowledge check. For this knowledge check, you are going to rewrite the sentences. Uh, I know that some people already did this activity. So I'm going to give you about three minutes and I want you to share and compare your answers about three minutes, and then we are going to check it as a class. What you are going to do is you are going to combine this sentence, the first sentence, I'm the youngest in the family, period. The nice thing is I get a lot of attention. So, how can I combine this sentence? Who can me, give me? Teacher. Yes, Doris. Okay, the nice thing about being the youngest in the family is that um, I, I get a lot of attention. Family is I get a lot of attention. Perfect. That is correct. So the first one is the nice thing about being the youngest in the family is I get a lot of attention or i can say family is that that mm -hmm. i get a lot of attention teacher what is the difference if i put that or if i don't put that the difference is that with that it's considered more formal and without that is considered more informal. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. At this moment, does anybody have any questions related to this activity? Any questions? Uh, teacher, no about the structure, but I have problem with the number three. Okay. I tried I tried uh, many times and it's it's uh, the platform take me mistake about the number three. Okay. Me too. Okay, let's look at number three together. Number three should be the bad part about being away is I miss my family. I wrote in that way, but but the platform take me. But mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the bad part of being away. Ah, uh, the bad part about being away is I miss my family. Let's see the bad part about being away. Is my family. Should be like that. Okay. The bad part of being away. 
Ah, being away at college. At college. At college, no. Uh huh. Is. I miss my family. Is it that one? No. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me check with the uh, technical support. Probably there is a glitch in the system. I'm going to take a, a screenshot. But Marvin have the the correct answer, right? Teacher. Hi, Marvin. Uh, maybe is missing is that. Ah, okay. Be in a way. You know, the same bro problem. I, would, I, I try with I that. I in that way. With that, it is a mistake. Okay. Again. Is that. Okay. But I have, I have a uh, good in that way. How? Uh, in that way that. Uh, that Share it. Works. Share it in the WhatsApp group, the sentence, and copy okay. paste. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, sometimes there are issues on the platform, so please excuse that. Okay. Send it, send it on the group. Yeah, I have sent. The bad part. The bad part being away. Is that I miss my family? Let's let's try it out with this one. Okay. It's correct. <laughs> it's correct? Yes. <laughs> so what are we missing? Maybe it's the... Uh, he didn't I, write the college. At college. He's oh, college. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, there it is. The bad part of being away is that I miss mm -hmm. my, my family. family. That's it. Without what? Without yes. at college. College. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you about three minutes. Complete the other ones. Then we check everything. Any, any questions? Okay. You will have three minutes. Could you share your screen? Do you, did you work in the knowledge check? Okay, give me a moment. But please. I have problem with the number three. Is without at or without at college? Without at college. Can you see Two. my screen? Yeah. Okay. The number three. Yeah. The bad. The bad part of being away is that I miss my family without at college. Okay. Oh, the it's wrong two? again. <laughs> I take a, I take. Write it. Uh, he put it on the chat. Okay. The number three. 
Can you see it? the chat? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, now it's correct. But my problem was uh, an, one space. Mm. In the center. <laughs> Yes, because I take out uh, at college, but I I had a a, a one space ex um, okay. more. I don't know, but now it's correct. I don't know if if uh, if we read each one. Yes, practice one. the pronunciation. Each one for each. Okay. Okay. Let's start. Yes. Anna. Oh, wait. Uh, the nice thing about being the youngest in the family is that I get a lot of attention. Yes, I I read the number two. Uh, the trouble with having a younger sister is she always wants to borrow my clothes. Okay, I read the number three. The bad part of being away is that I miss my family. Okay. The worst thing about about working at the night at night is that I can have dinner with my family. Okay, number five. One bad thing about being the oldest in the family is that I always have to babysit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Practice. You have... If you can. No, because I, I have problem with the exercise one, two. Do you have it? One. Uh, it's the first one. The knowledge check? Uh-huh. In, in this number, section? Yes, number one, one two. two. One number two. Three, Number three and six. Number three. Uh, the wrote, answer. Yes, I wrote visiting her parents. Okay, Enrique, please give me the answer to number two. Number one. Hey, okay, I am the youngest in the family. The nice thing I get a lot of, of attention. The nice thing about being the youngest in the family is, is I get a lot of attention. Excellent. Number two, Ivania. The trouble, the trouble with having a younger sister is that she always wants to borrow my clothes. Perfect. Marvin, number three. Number three, the bad part of being away is I miss my family. Excellent. 
The next one is Robert Fabio. Or one. Uh, the worst thing about working at night is that I can have dinner with my family. Excellent. Mirna, number five. Um, one bad thing about being the oldest in the family is that I always have to babysit. Excellent. Good job, guys. All right, at this moment, does anybody have any questions related to this activity? Yes, teacher, I have a question. Yes. Uh, for example, in number one, we mm -hmm. use about with the verb being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before the verb being. But in number three, we mm -hmm. use of. And I don't know what is the rule for, for that. And then when we use with, for example, in number two, we use with having. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, we can use about or we can use of or you can use with before the gerund structure. Okay. And it, it doesn't change the meaning. It's the same um, thing. It's the same meaning. You can use either preposition about, with, or of, and it does not change the meaning. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's always going to follow the gerund. Being, having, being, studying, running, eating. Okay. Calling, mm -hmm, working. All right, okay. another question related to this topic. Another question? Okay, for the next activity, we are going to watch a short video. In this section, participants will learn compound family terms. Compound family terms. Let's check it out. Have a pen, paper, and take notes. Go over the family tree. You will find some compound terms which use prefixes and some others use suffixes. Now that you know more family terms, talk in class about your family tree. Don't forget to share some compound terms which use prefixes. And okay, let's look at this picture. Can everybody see the picture? Yes. Yes. yes okay. Teacher. So you have compounds, for example, great grandfather. That's a compound noun. Great grandmother. That's a compound noun. Great uncle, compound noun. Great grandfather, compound. Great grandmother. Great aunt. Those are all compound nouns. Uncle, is that a compound noun? No. No, no, no it's not. Because it's only one word. Uh, Brother-in-law, is that a compound noun? Yes. Yes. Yes, because you have brother is a noun. Law is a noun. So you have brother-in-law. That's a compound noun. Uh, sister-in-law, is that a compound noun? Yes. 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 What yes. about brother? Is that a compound mm -hmm. noun? No, it's not. No, it's not. What about grandmother? Is that a compound noun? Yes. Yes. Grandfather, is that a compound noun? Yes. Yes. Okay, so words that describe the family more than one is a compound noun, and words that are only one word are not a compound noun. Any questions? Okay, no. for this activity, you are going to speak about your family. And some others use suffixes. 
Now that you know more family terms, talk in class about your family tree. Don't forget to share your information on our discussion box. Okay, so you're going to write at least five sentences over here. You're going to go to Añade una publicación. You're going to put family compound nouns. And here you're going to give me five examples, five sentences. Five. Okay, for example, my grandfather was a farmer. My father works in a factory. Do you have any questions? And then you will click Enviar. Do you have any questions? No, teacher. All right, no, teacher. you will have five minutes. You can write the same examples as your pairs. You can write the same examples as your pairs. <laughs> I don't know if someone can share your screen and write. The I sentence. The I can, I own the phone. And Doris? Can you? I can. Okay. The title is Family Compound Nouns. Nouns. Yeah. Okay, the number one. Number one is I can uh, in my case it's true my father was a farmer. Okay. Yeah, the teacher said father. that grandfather, <laughs> but in my case my father was a farmer. Well, my grandfather was an accountant. Okay. Farmer. Yeah. Number two. My grandfather was an account accountant. I think that is. Grandfather was a. Repeat, please. Account, account oh. means no. Was an an account. Uh huh. It's an. You With need an to account. put an. Yeah, 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 because it's a. Is the word is, yeah. My brother is a teacher, a math teacher. My sister is an, arch an architect. Is a an architect. Um, 
And the last one. Uh, oh. My mother is a seller mm -hmm. or a merchant. Merch? Comerciante. Mm -hmm. Merchant, I think I'm not sure, but merchant, comerciante. It's Auntie. okay. Empty. Okay. Yeah, I think. Okay. Six or five. I don't remember exactly. Hey, listen. Five. He said five. Five. Yes. Submit. Okay. Uh, hello, Ivania. Can I have your examples, please? Yes. Um, okay. Number one is my grandmother was a great dressmaker. Uh, number two, yesterday I went to shopping with my sister-in-law. Excellent. Today I lunch with my cousin. I spend a lot of time with my brother and the last one, my father works as a police. Excellent, excellent. Very good, Ivania, thank you. Okay. Let me have the next one, Marvin, let me have your examples, please. Of course, teacher, it's the same with Ivania. Yes. Okay, oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. It would be the number one, my grandmother was a great dressmaker. Mm -hmm. Number two, yesterday I went to shopping with my sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. Number three, today I lunched with my cousin. Mm -hmm. Number four, I spent a lot of time with my brother. And the number five, my father worked as a police. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, Marvin. Let me have Roxana. Let me have your examples. Okay, teacher. My father was a farmer. My grandfather was an account. Accountant. My brother, accountant. Accountant. Oh, okay. Okay. My brother was an architect. And my mother is a merchant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you, Roxana. All right, guys. Now we're going to move forward and look at the next one, which is listening. Family Reunion A. Listen to Victor tell a friend about his family reunion. What were they celebrating at the reunion? Hey, Victor, you're back in town. So how did it go? Uh, it was great. I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy it, but it turned out to be a lot of fun. Was your grandma surprised? Completely. She knew we'd do something special for her 80th birthday but she never expected that the whole family would turn up for a reunion. How many people were there? Lots, I'd say about 80 or so. Folks showed up from all over the place. We had people from Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, and even Mexico. I got to see people I hadn't seen for years, like Luann, my uncle's cousin. Actually, I don't think I've seen her since I was a little kid. Oh, and my brother Rudy was there with his wife and their new baby. Grandma's first great-granddaughter. That sounds like fun. So was there anyone there you didn't recognize? 
Yeah, but that was okay because as soon as we got there, we each got a name tag showing how we were related to Grandma. Like mine said, Victor, Anita's grandson, Hector's son. That's a cool idea. So you could immediately see how you were related to someone. Yeah, most people have changed a lot over the years. Plus, my mother-in-law came along because she hadn't seen any of these people since our wedding, so the name tags worked out really well. So were there other people like your mother-in-law? I mean, she's not really a relative. Oh, sure. There were quite a few people who weren't directly descended from grandma, like people's in-laws, neighbors, friends of the family. But their name tags said who they were and what the connection was. <laughs> Sounds like it must have been a lot of fun. I bet your grandma was happy. Yeah, really happy. All right, are you ready or do you want me to repeat? Are you ready? Sure, I'm or ready. You... I'm ready. I'm ready. In my case. Okay, number one, what were they celebrating? They were celebrating they were... Victor's grandmother's 80th, 80th birthday. birthday. 80th birthday. Excellent. Part two. How many people were there about? 80. 80. 80. Number three, which places does he mention people came from? Texas, Texas Chicago, Chicago, Florida, California, California and New Mexico. Mexico. New Mexico. Who is the first relative he mentions was at the reunion? His, His uncle's cousin. cousin. His uncle's cousin. Who else besides relatives were at the reunion? Friends, Friends of the family. family. Friends of the family. Number three is Ron. Oh, which one is it? This one. Mexico. No, no, Mexico. Only no, Mexico. New Mexico. It's only Mexico. This one. Number, yes, this. It's only, uh, yeah. No. Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, and Mexico. Yeah. Texas, Chicago, Chicago. Florida, and the last California, one. New Mexico. The last one. The last no, one. The last one. Yes. Mm -hmm. There it is. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Any questions related to this activity? No. No, teach. All right, let's move forward then. And we're going to do the last activity for the section one. So yes, we are going to start section two today. So for this activity, we are going to be looking at this reading exercise. Full house. Full house. Let's see if it loads. Probably not. There it is. Okay. Full house. Walk into the California home of Ann Bells and her husband, Jim Silcock. And you'll see kids everywhere playing video games, doing homework, and getting ready for dinner. There are 30 boys in this close-knit household, and Annabelle is their mom. Bells has wanted to help children since she was a kid. I was intrigued by the movie Oliver in the 1960s, a musical based on the Charles Dickens novel, Oliver Twist. I told my mom, that's what I want to do. I want to adopt orphans. All right, let me have a volunteer to read the next paragraph. Can I, teacher? Yes, Roxana. Okay. And 
ants boys range in age from three to 25. All of them are a challenge in some way. They each have a special needs physically, emotionally, or at school, says Bellis. She doesn't focus on what her kid can do, only on what they can. They go to mainstream schools, take karate, go skating at the roller, roller rock, roller ring, ring, and even act on television. In an interesting twist, 13 of her boys are going to be in a local theater production of Oliver. Of Oliver, excellent. Thank you, Roxana. Let me have one more volunteer read the next I section. Just, I mean, Go ahead, Mirna. Okay. Facing 30 boys is not, is not a small task. Every day, uh, a small army of child care, workers, child care. nurses, and volunteers come in to help cook and clean. Wash, carry loads. Um, laundry a day and take care of health needs. Excellent. Thank you. Let me. me have another volunteer for the next one. Who said me? Me, Anna. All right, Anna Pineda, continue, please. Say, to find out how much such a large family cost, we follow with Jim's click up to the grocery store. He has spent 880 for foods for one week. Every month, they spend 2,000 to run five minivans, 15,000 for the 14 paid helpers, and more than 10,000 on dental and medical expenses. There are also clothing insurance and mortgage payments. Perfect, thank you. Another participant? Me, teacher. Oh, all Doris. right, go, go ahead, Doris. The family receives $26,000 a month from the federal government and has some income from a family business. Uh, all the money is spent on the children. Having new clothes and fancy cars isn't important to bill us. Wow, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Another participant. Me teacher. Okay, go ahead. How do the kids feel? Says 17 years old Anthony. The family is there whenever I need something. Under all this chaos, I feel like I'm loved. Perfect. Perfect. The last one. Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead. This was my dream and everything about what I'm doing was everything I wanted to happen in my life. Says and bells. So absolutely no regrets. This is perfect. I couldn't ask for it. I couldn't ask for it to be better. Maybe a bigger house, you know, would be nice. <laughs> I imagine with all those kids in there, <laughs> they need yes. a huge house. Okay, perfect. Let's look at the first one. What reason does Ann Bell gives for adopting so many children? After watching the musical Oliver. Watching the musical Oliver. Number two, what's special about the children that Bells and her husband adopt? They, they have, have, a have special, special needs. needs. They have special needs. Number three, what are the total monthly expenses for, the fa for this family? Over $27,000 Wow. That's a lot yeah. of money per month. Because All right. Awesome. Awesome. 
At this moment, does anybody have any questions related to this activity? No, teacher. Questions about the activity? No. It's interesting. Yes, that's <laughs> very interesting. Imagine having a federal government check for $27,000 per month tax deductible. That's, I am buying it's a, a lot of noise in, in their house. Oh, yes. Um, I, I don't imagine in that situation. I don't like the noise. <laughs> <laughs> Too many children. I am crazy with my with my with my dog and I imagine with 30, 30 children. Oh, know. yeah. It's sounds, crazy, I think. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> they, they are nice. <laughs> okay, awesome work, guys. Now we are going to move forward and we're going to be looking at section number two. In section number two, we are going to be looking at mistakes and mysteries. By the end of this session, participants will be able to practice using past models and phrasal models of obligation. Past models. I wasted a lot of money once because I thought I needed to. What is the past modal in this sentence? What is the past modal in this sentence? I needed to. Needed to is the past mm -hmm. sentence. I mean, it's the mm -hmm. past modal. The next one. When I had the opportunity, I should have blah, blah, blah. What is the past <laughs> modal in this sentence? Should have. Should have, should have. Okay, let's listen to the video. Hi, we're about to study past models and phrase and models of obligation. Stay and watch the explanation. Past models and phrasal models of obligation. Should have, was supposed to, had to, and needed to all describe obligations in the past, although they sometimes have different uses. I should have stayed home and studied. It was a good idea, but I didn't do it. I was supposed to be studying this weekend. It was required, but I didn't do it. I had to wear a uniform. We were forced to do this. I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. There was no obligation. I thought I needed to have more clothes. I thought this was necessary. Past models and phrasal models. Should have is followed by a past participle, whereas was, were, supposed to, had to, didn't have to, I needed to, are followed by the simple form of the verb. Had to describe strong obligation in the past and suggest there was no choice. I had to water my plants. Was, were, not supposed to, Suggest an expectation that the action was required or prohibited. It is comparable in meaning to wasn't, weren't allowed to. He was supposed to graduate last year. Should have suggests that the action was advisable, but was not done. Should not have suggests that the action was not advisable, but was done. He should have learned English before. Needed, did they need to, suggest that an action was necessary, but there was choice about doing it or not. She needed to exercise. 
didn't have to means that there was not obligation to do the action. They didn't have to wake up early. Complete the following sentences with your own information. Then, compare your answers in class with a partner. Okay. So, for this activity, I would like for you to give me at least five examples. You're going to go over here. You're going to go where it says, añade una publicación. And you are going to write past modals. Past modals. For example, you're going to write five examples. One, two, three, four, five. Five examples. For example, I went out last night. I should have gone to sleep early. Number two, I ate ten pupusas. I shouldn't have eaten so much. When you finish, you are going to put in VR. Any questions? Any questions? No. You can write the same examples as your partner. Let's go. Should have, you didn't have to. So, I can share my screen. Hello? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hello again. Hi, hello. Um, did you understand about the activity? More or less. We have to do uh, sentences with the model sets. Pa past yeah. models. Past models. Past models. Okay. Uh, I don't know um, if someone. I, I, I was supposed to uh, get my certificate last year. Uh, could you repeat? I was supposed to get my food safety certificate last year. Uh, but we need to write on the, the discussion box. Uh -huh. That's yes. a good one. That's a good one. It's okay, I say. Yeah. Yep, that's a good example.
models. As models. Yeah. Repeat your example, please. I was supposed. To get my food safety certificate. To get my food safety safety no, food food safety food. it's okay certificate last year last year excellent example thank you Number two. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I didn't have to go to my shorts today. No. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. One with should have. What? Let's do one with should have. I don't know. I should have eat less food. Uh. All right, Doris, let me have your examples, please. Doris, let me have your examples, please. We have right one example, teacher. That's okay. Okay, I was supposed to get my food safety certificate last year. Very good. I was supposed to get my food safety certificate last year. Excellent example. Just one example? Yes, because overtime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, it's time to go. We will continue tomorrow. Please continue working on the platform and we will see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.